Oh, well, at least we got a first aid kit to replace the one we used up. That was nice of them. Maria, get out of the way. Why doesn't she move? Like, at least characters in some other games move when you accidentally bump into them. But nope, Maria just stays there and takes it. That one's locked. And we can't unlock it until we unlock a specific event. So I don't want to use up too many of these shotgun shells because I know there's a boss coming up in like 15 minutes. That will probably have to wait until the next No, it's coming up soon, so I want to save those shells. So, I know you can examine one of these rooms right away, but do it yet. Simply because if you do, that's where Maria will kind of stay there. Well, there's some the music again, there they come. Well, at least it's panic. That's easier to deal with. Has anybody been watching the Olympics? They're pretty good so far. That was disappointing though. Jacob Ellis didn't win. She didn't fall, but she didn't win. But the competition was too tough though. That's actually been the case with a lot of events this year. Like, people are saying, I'm surprised because people are saying, oh, they're not all they're cracked up to be, or they're not all they used to be. Like, what the fuck are you watching? Like, some of the events this year have had the strongest feels they've ever had. Like in any other, in any other Winter Olympics in recent memory, Jacob Ellis would have won that race. But no, here she was just outmatched. And she and the other girl, Sankova, were a match by someone that they didn't even expect to win. Like, I think pretty announcers had dismissed that girl, the one who did wing out of hand, because she had a busted knee, and no, she just came back from behind and demolished everyone. So here's a save point, nice useful little feature. This is depressing too, like look at these rooms, how small they are. Imagine if you're a person being treated here for mental illness, and you gotta live in this this, it's not even cozy, it's just cramped, rinky dink little room, like, how can you possibly expect to heal in this place like this? I mean, I know the dirtiness and the grime and all the rust and stuff, that's all a product of it being abandoned and it being the town's influence, I know that part, but still, like, imagine even if this was all clean, 
at all kept kept and well maintained, which we know it's not, because if we if you play through the series, you get various memos at various points telling you the hospitals are poorly maintained. They're maintained like shit. All their money the doctors or the order one of the others so yeah none of these two hospitals are in top tip condition imagine living here for a significant period of your life you know quite a chunk of change eight years ten years twelve years How can you expect to heal if it's in a place like that? Like, wouldn't you want like open, op wide open spaces, bright out, quiet fields like they had in the Danvers Hospital in Massachusetts before they, before they closed that up? Like, wouldn't you want to live in that if you absolutely have to live somewhere else for treatment? Like, how can you possibly get better in this cramped little room? Like, it's kind of cruel if you ask me. So this is a very complicated box. We had we need let's see one, two, we need three different keys or combinations. So I think we had one to eight I think one of them was one, two, eight one. No, eight two one eight. Okay, so there's one. But we don't know the other one yet. That one's actually in a place that we can't access yet. There's something written on the wall. I'll take care of you forever. It's my destiny. seeing a pattern with the enemies re respawning like you think maybe that's kind of indicative of James's mental state you know I haven't really noticed before but like I said even in Silent Hill 3 and Silent Hill 1 even on the hard difficulties they don't respawn like this this is funny I hadn't noticed it before or I hadn't noticed it in a long time but I think it's definitely indicative of James's mental state Examine. There's something stuck inside. The hole is too small. I can't get my hand inside to reach it. Maybe if I had a long, narrow tool of some kind. It's funny that actually used to be blood before they changed it, because it's too. They said it was too gruesome, too disturbing. And it's like funny, you can spill loads of blood if you change it on the options menu, which I did. So it's funny, that is disturbing. So blood leading to the drain is disturbing. But manic and deformed monsters and loads of blood outside aren't disturbing. Yeah, that makes sense, I suppose. Stupid game sensors. So we gotta go track down Louise or find out what what Louise is because we need her it to solve that puzzle. We got one part of it. We've got the rusty bent needle, but that's not gonna be enough. We also have that key. And we have the purple bull keys. 
So actually, let's go use those keys just to see what's left. I think it's just the number. Oh, not again. Come on. You see what they mean? They spawn out of nowhere. Which is not something that happens in other games. Like, seriously, they do not spawn like this in the, in the other three games in the main series. It's only this one. So let's go use let's use this one. There's the lapis eye. And there is a purple ball key. So we only got one left. And if I could turn the numbers here I would but I think they don't let you do it until you activate a certain cutscene like you cannot cheat your way out of this they will just turn the, ra the numbers randomly Monsters is James killed by this point? How many mannequins has he killed? Like 20? 30? I've lost count. And striking at the crotch again. You know, I'm sure it's a coincidence, but it just. It's amusing considering what we know about James later on. That he target that particular area on them. It's like in Metal Gear Solid 3 with Vogan and Tatiana, or Tanya, where he kicks her at one point in the cutscene, and a lot of people are thinking, oh, he kicks her in the stomach. No, he kicks her in the crotch. You can see it. If hey, girls can get hurt there too, in all seriousness. That's not something that's only exclusively to men. Just a hangover. You should rest. Mm. <laughs> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay, ew. Like, I think what bothers most people is that it's a dirty grimy abandoned mental hospital like I don't mind the mattress so much but like look at how soiled this place is and she says it's comfy Maria is definitely not a normal woman also got a laugh it's the hangover she was drinking herself to death last night so there's the roof key which we need Here's an interesting little scene. James, I want to ask you something. What if... What if you can't find Mary? What will you do? I haven't thought about that. For sure. 
because let's face it, he pretty much has no purpose besides coming here and finding Mary. That's his only purpose so far. So we gotta leave Maria there, but don't worry, nobody will threaten her there. None of the creatures go in there. They can't open doors, so... She's pretty safe in there for the time being. You know, if it were a smut scene and a fanfic, and there were some other, let's say, less reputable writers than me, they'd probably have sex in there, but thankfully it's not a fanfic. And James can't get lucky with her. Not that he would, but then again, well, let's just, you'll see what I mean about James later on. So this is actually an important diary that you can pick up and this actually affects your ending. Like this, this is one of the items that if you're going, we're going for a certain ending, so we definitely want to pick this up. But uh, I'm just warning you, this will affect your ending. It's one of the necessary items. So there's something on the floor. Is this a diary? May 9th. Rain. Stared out the window all day. Peaceful here. Nothing to do. Still not allowed to go outside. May 10. Still raining. Talk with the doctor a little. Would they have saved me if they didn't have a family to feed? I know I'm pathetic. Weak. Not everyone can be strong. May 11th. Rain again. The meds made me feel sick today. If I'm only better when I'm drugged, then who am I anyway? May 12th. Rain as usual. I don't want to cause any more trouble for anyone, but I'm a botherer either way. Can it really be such a sin, such a sin to run instead of fight? Some people may say so, but they don't have to live in my shoes. It may be selfish, but it's what I want. It's too hard like this. It's just too hard. May 13. It's clear outside. The doctors told me I've been released. That I've got to go home. I. The diary is here. There are no more entries. What was the diary doing up here? So that's sad. And what was the diary doing up here? It's pretty obvious. I think they jumped, didn't they? You know, some people are saying, Oh, that's Mary's diary. She must have been staying here while she was sick. From No, that's not Mary's diary. She wasn't staying in Silent Hill. She was staying in South Ashfield. You know, her hometown where she lived. You'll see that later in Silent Hill 4. But no, this wasn't... It's still pretty sad. Also kind of raises the issue, like, is suicide really a cheap coward's way out? And the answer is no in a lot of cases, you know. Seen on Quora recently, that question is getting raised more and more. Especially in these turbulent times, where let's face it, there pretty much isn't much reason to live anymore for a lot of people. So no, it, it's ex it really does depend on the situation, but there's no uniform answer, you know. You can't just judge everyone who considers suicide. Like they're committing some type of sin or they're doing something unthinkable, you know. There may be cases in which a person's life simply isn't con worth continuing anymore. You know, and to be honest, I don't think that's a bad thing if the person knows that their family doesn't appreciate them, that there's no one there that would actually miss them or rely on them. Then why the hell are they making the effort to stay alive? You know, you've got to look at it from their point of view. Do they really have a reason for living, or is it just your excuses about them supposedly having a reason for living because you don't just don't want to see them do something unseemly? Like thinking of them, or are you thinking of you when you advise them against that? And what about people who are terminally ill? Like, would you say that to them if you know there's no cure and they're gonna suffer a horrible death, a slow, a slow, long, prolonged death? No. So like most things, it's complicated. Suicide is complicated. The door won't open. Something is holding it closed from the other side. It won't open no matter how hard I try. Oh, and we know what that is, folks, don't we? We know. James just climb over that fence and escape. You know what's coming. There he is. Uh -huh. 
Yep, look at him nod there. He's like, that's a job well done. <laughs> you know, he was satisfied with that. You gotta admire the precision Pyramid Head has over his knife. The control he has over that knife. To hit James perfectly with this, with the flat end of the instantly like that. That's some precision control right there. And whoa, he knocked us into he knocked us into danger status. So we gotta one one first aid kit won't be enough. We gotta take one and health drink. And even then you can see that's still not enough. I don't think there's anyone in here unlike in Silent Hill 3, but be careful just to be sure. Something is written on the wall. If Joseph looks calm, he can be taken out of his cell. So here's the last final number that we need. There's something written on the wall. Turn, turn, turn the numbers. Better not forget them, so I'll write them down here. The other one, my secret name. So we've got, it looks like a five, six, seven, puzzle combination lock we can just turn the numbers until we get the right one yeah there's a nurse there in Silent Hill 3 as depressing as this place is here it's gonna get much worse in the 17 years between this game and Silent Hill 3 I'm just warning you like it, it get really dark from here some some deep dark shit goes on in this hospital in between those 17 years so let's go get that key I think we're gonna be done for the night because it is getting late and my voice is starting to go like I am not cut out for long recording sessions at all oh we actually are on the third floor where the hell am I going yeah, I know she have a drink of water or something here, but it is, it is, it is past 3 a.m. So like, yeah, I'm not going out there to get something to drink. I'm also losing hard drive space because these these videos cost a lot. They take up a lot of space to record. We guessed wrong. Maybe it's a nine. Maybe it's a one. Okay, so that's not right. That's not right at all. see 
Okay, so I think that's actually a five. Five. Cider is five. I know one's five steps. I think it's five, six, seven. But I can't make out the other number. this done quickly the overall game because I really want to move on to Silent Hill 3 and Silent Hill 4 those are more interesting games for me like this is fascinating in terms of subtext and all that stuff but I really want to play those two games because they are absolutely fascinating and Silent Hill 3 is scary as fuck and Silent Hill 4 is just a mind screw oh there it is 5675 god who would have thought that was a 5 like, I don't know what the hell that looked like there's nothing inside this box. No, I'm wrong. There are a few hairs inside. Got a piece of hair. So that's creepy because that's obviously Louise. And that means that guy, where he's a boy or a man, took that hair. He either took it from a girl. He was stalking a girl and collected it. Or worse, he killed a girl and took her hair. I don't think it's that extreme because they didn't mention it in the file, but either way, he was talking someone. So you gotta use the hair and the needle to get that key. Imagine if that was a pubic hair. Just a really long pubic hair. Gross. Nah, I'm kidding. Nobody's hair can grow that long. This is actually pretty creative on James's part. Because like who would dare to actually try this? Like I'd be I'd be scared my fingers are gonna mess it up and just and just lose the only opportunity I have to get that thing. So like here we go. Wow, he tied the hair over that. He's gonna fish it out. I know the town's encouraging you to use that way, to use those tools that way, but like, seriously, my my hands would be shaking if I had to do that. And I would immediately cover mm -hmm. that hole with my shoe or my hand, because I would not want to risk losing that thing back down the drain. That's what happens in Silent Hill 1. You lose a key down the drain after you unplug a ball that's, I think it's blocking it up and you have to go all the way down to the bottom of the building to get it and that's with an open drain here's a drain that's closed so if you lose that key you are never getting it back you'd have to just start busting down the door shooting them open or beating them down with an axe or something because you are if that thing goes down the drain you are losing that key forever All right so let's go visit Maria and save because after that we are going to go down next time onto the first floor which is pretty much the only place left and there actually are a lot of rooms you can explore down there it's pretty much just a staging area for a boss so let's go visit our little tramp here <coughs> I'll be okay soon <coughs> did you find Laura? no I didn't find Laura People actually debate whether Laura saw her or not outside. I think it can go either way. I personally think Laura didn't see her, but at the same time she could have just ignored her, you know. The game never makes it clear who's seen what at, at different points. And by the way, when I say little tramp, I mean that in the nicest way possible. Like a lot of people dislike Maria because she's supposedly a slut. That's what they call her, a slut, a whore, a bitch, worse. But you know what, I have no problem absolutely with those types of characters. Like, better to be free and be yourself than try to live up to some prudish example set by a bunch of religious assholes who don't really give a fuck about you anyway. You know, be yourself. And if 
if that means being a little promiscuous, enjoying a nice fancy little time, that's fine by me. I would not mind having a girlfriend like that at all. Unless she got around too much, but that's just an issue of disease and being careful, not necessarily having a lot of partners, you know. I'm not judgmental like that. Some people are close to me. I won't mention who, or I will tell you that my immediate family is very, very small. Have told me, how the hell can you even think of having a girlfriend if you had one that would be in an open relationship? Like, how could you even stand to be in that situation between you and two women who are attracted to both you and each other? And I'm like, why the hell would I not be, you know? I've had zero social life for the better part of my life. I honestly would not give a crap if my girlfriend told me, you know what, I'm attracted to this other girl too. I like both of you and I want to live with both of you in this nice little trio. You know, this nice little threesome. I'd say, sure, why the hell not? So we were at 2 hours 37 minutes. We're at 3 hours and 39 minutes, so... Alright, we did an hour and two minutes. Not bad. We did some good progress. But yeah, I would not mind that at all. I wouldn't mind it if it was a man, but not for the reason that you think. Not because of some manly territorial crap or anything like that, or because I couldn't possibly tolerate another male in their relationship. No, it's because men are fucking insane a lot of the time. Like seriously, guys, guys think they can share that they can tolerate another person like that in their lives but let me tell you guys will kill each other or a woman women are much more understanding and accepting and I think that's why those type of relationships worked out better when it's two women and one man than two men and one woman and you see a lot of times in open relationship shows and swinger shows on Discovery Health and TLC it's just men get insanely jealous very easily for the stupidest reasons so that's why aside from the fact that I'm not attracted to most men either like you know most men are hideous to me I can acknowledge some of them as objectively as handsome like obviously Chris Hemsworth is a handsome man like Robert Downey Jr. is a handsome man Idris Elba is a handsome man the list goes on and on Chadwick Boseman I can acknowledge that but I'll be honest most men are dead hideous to me they suck and their personal habits where they act like complete pigs which we actually will get into that a little bit in the game here further down the line how repulsive some men are but yeah that's just that's just my opinion most men are just too repulsive for me to be in a open relationship with one woman and them like I just I could just not stand them they could probably not stand me and we would probably just kill each other but you know that has nothing to do with territory or wanting to own the woman or anything like that no it's just I hate men I just hate most men around me I am a cynical heartless son of a bitch at this point and I just completely hate most fucking men around like they're repulsive but anyway like I said I don't mind Maria being like way at all you know, she can, she can sleep with whoever, however many men she wants, or women. Lord knows I've paired her up with a few women in my fanfics, I'll tell you that. You know? There aren't too many appealing male characters in Silent Hill. There's Harry, James, Henry to a certain extent, a couple others here and there, but by and large it's not a, it's not like Final Fantasy or... Metal Gear Solid or anything where you have a huge range of appealing male characters like most of the men in this series just plain suck which is why I don't use them much so yeah there's another character similar to Maria's called Cynthia in Silent Hill 4 you'll see and even though she's in it only for a short while she's absolutely one of my favorite characters nice Hispanic chick pretty open minded girl pretty fun for the short time she's in and I don't mind that she's way at all. Like, 
let's just call it this way. I prefer the sluts over the prudes because a one that's a demeaning term, and I don't have to be a feminist or some type of super sensitive man unmanly guy to do. No, it's just people use that term too loosely and too freely to the point where it's lost all meaning. Like seriously, I've heard, I've heard women call other women sluts for sleeping with one man that they didn't end up marrying six months later. Like, come on, that is just plain stupid. That is just fucking stupid. So yeah, characters like Cynthia, Maria, I don't mind them at all. Eva from Metal Gear Solid 3, you know. Like I said, just be better than being a false person. And if you're a little promiscuous by nature, a little naturally more open, shall we say, than most people, who the fuck cares? I don't care. I wish I could be that way. This is where we actually have to go down next time. It's right here in the elevator. We have to take this down to the first floor. And we're gonna meet up with another character and start the beginnings of the boss fight. But that'll be next time. So thank you again. I hope you're enjoying this playthrough. Thank you for watching. You know the drill. And I hope I'm not boring you too much with all my diatribes and rants on little subjects here and there. Again, I hope you're enjoying it. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.